Hey everyone, Brian Beeler, Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab, and today we've got a video review of the latest, uh, one of the latest from QNAP, this to you guy. What's going on with this fella? So this guy is a little bit special. It's from the line of QNAP uh, devices running ZFS, which compared to the traditional methods, you get um, data integrity and other features that have certain benefits, uh, primarily being compression deduplication, although there are certain downsides to it. All right, and we'll get to some of that, but it's a standard 2U chassis with 12 three and a half inch bays. What do we have inside here? We were, were using not. the uh, DVD Red uh, one terabyte um, SSD. Oh, I found another one. Yes, I believe these are if all I... in the top row. Well, I'll just pick out of the middle then. Yes. Ah, here we go. And then the 14 terabyte uh, DVD Red. So we, in this, we were trying to do a mix of uh, traditional storage as well as uh, flash media. So using the hard drives obviously is a large, slower data pool, and using the SSDs is a faster data pool. But you could use them for cache, you could use them to hold logs, you could do other things within this system, right? Yeah, we've uh, in, in a lot of our reviews, we focused on here's hard drive and here's uh, flash specifically. So right. that was our focus, although there are, there's multitudes of different methods away uh, you can use flash inside the system. Yeah, and when we turn to the numbers, we can see that there are definitely workloads like in all of these things where going to the SSDs makes more sense or going to the hard drives makes more sense and some that can be cached and some workloads that don't want to be cached. So we'll get into all that. Let's talk about the rest of the hardware though before we get too far away and before I break any of the SSDs. Um, what else stands out to you on, on this thing? Well, so uh, they include uh, two... Um RJ45 10G base T 10 gig ports on the back, okay. as well as uh, we have a um, uh, cool. SAP Plus based uh, 10 gig as well. Um, now they're both through PCI Edge cards, um, so it's not like it's on board. They have uh, four uh, 1 gig ports on the back uh, for yeah, more on board storage. storage. As well as uh, some additional uh, connectivity, so you get your USB 3 in both a Type A and USB C port, right? Um, and your uh, redundant power, uh, which it has benefits. It's it's nice to have that on board since um, it, it's a little more availability for power outages, splitting between line power or a battery backup, and other fun uh, fun things like that. All right, we've got four RAM slots on this side, the CPU, of course, and then. Uh, you know, as you could, as you said, two cards that were used for 10 gig, and then there's two open slots that you could use for bringing in uh, either additional connectivity. They support fiber channel in this thing too, yeah. I think, right? Uh, you could put use it for additional SSDs if you want to put some in there, or actually you could put in a uh, SAT expander and then blow this thing out to, you know, uh, several other expansion units if you need more capacity. Yeah, it really just depends on how you want to deploy this. Uh, the two included 10 gig cards. What's going on with the differences here, though? So it really depends on the infrastructure that you have in place. So there's RG45, which is a little more of the cost-effective uh, method of uh, 10 gig, as well as F uh, SFP Plus, which you can do uh, short-reach copper or uh, long uh, long-distance optical. So it really depends on what you have pre-installed in your data center. Okay, and so we've talked about the hardware here, and Kevin teased the ZFS bit. Let's go ahead and get into the uh, uh, the slides here a little bit and, and look at some of the other highlights and benefits of the of ZFS. Uh, so just at a high level, QNAP highlights things like ECC RAM, the two uh, 10 gig cards we talked about, SSD support, and their uh, their app center virtualization support, all those sorts of good things, and the flexible uh, PCIe expansion slots. So there's four on the system. Two are used for the 10 gig cards. I guess you could yank one if you wanted to, right? Yeah, there, I mean, if you're really dead set on using one particular uh, card interface, you could always free that slot up. Okay. And then as we dive into some of the benefits of ZFS, this is not all of them, but these are some of the high level uh, call outs from, from QNAP in terms of uh, data deduplication, compression, and compaction. Those three are sort of the primary uh, benefits that are people are looking for from a space reduction standpoint. Uh, of course, ZFS is known for their uh, rely data integrity, reliability, that sort of thing. So that's another reason why that's so popular. Uh, RAID Z support, caching, and in snapshots to infinity, uh, all all 
more enterprise features that you don't typically find in a NAS at this price point. Yeah, and a lot of the caching elements really go back to uh, when Flash was really expensive and you didn't really re you didn't want to use a lot of Flash in a given platform, but now uh, costs have come down enough where maybe you want to do all Flash and have the inline dedupe and compression enabled to get more uh, cost effectiveness out of your uh, Flash investment. Okay. And so one of the things that we didn't yet talk about too is I, I think we failed to mention that this is a SATA system. I don't even think we said that at the top. Uh, but one of the things that I like is this use case here where we would use it as a secondary behind a faster uh, solution and use this as a uh, use those snapshots, use it as a failover, or just a backup target because it's going to be cost-effective capacity for something like that. Yeah, and with ZFS, I mean, with uh, there are certain areas where performance might not be the strong suit of uh, ZFS, but all the data integrity options that do with the compression, I mean, it's almost perfect suited for a backup target. Yeah, it makes a low-cost alternative for that. And then uh, there are two models in this family. We've got the 32 gig model. The only difference is the uh, the RAM footprint. It's also available with 128. And that's basically just using the, uh, in our case, the two 16 gig DIMMs with two open slots or in the 128, the uh, four higher density DIMMs. Yeah. Now, when we uh, look at the inside, this is another layout, uh, kind of showing what's uh, inside. I and picked this one for the colors. Yes, it, it's very colorful. <laughs> uh, but it gives you an idea of the layout, although it looks like our pre-installed slots for the 10 gig are a little bit different than the uh, the photo. But again, these are just pre-installed cards. You can move them around or kind of get a better layout depending on your uh, uh, platform. All right, so when we talk about performance, how did you end up setting this up? You talked about having a hard drive pool and a flash pool, but just remind us where we are on, on drive count and, and RAID settings. So we were using uh, eight of our uh, 14 terabyte WD RED uh, hard drives in RAID 6, and then uh, for the SSDs, we had four uh, in RAID 5. Okay. And that gives us a pretty good uh, normal layout of how you'd be deploying this in the field since um, you can get fast, uh, faster uh, environments going to a RAID 10, but then you're going to take a capacity big, hit. Right? Uh, capacity hit. Um, but our primary focus here was showing what you can get from a uh, traditional spinning media pool and then at the high end what you can get from a flash pool. All right. With that in mind, for sequential workloads, you can get better performance on hard drives than you can from flash in this, which is not that surprising. We've generally, if you're using it for, if you're using any given NAS platform for large, uh, large block transfers, you're generally going to find very strong performance on hard drives. That's an area where that they do really well. Uh, and again, for small block uh, uh, sequential, it's still really strong when it comes to. Um, the spinning media, although at a certain point you're going to get higher performance from flash. Especially on the iSCSI side, huh? That really trounced uh, SMB as well with the, the uh, SSDs, huh? Yeah. Now, when we go to a uh, random workload, this is where uh, flash media is going to be higher performance, but a thing that will stand out is even with our uh, SSDs in this, it's still dramatically lower than where you'd find it in a non-ZFS platform. But that's not a knock against uh, QNAP's implementation. This is uh, this is what we've seen with any ZFS platform. It's not performance in small block RAM transfers is not its strong suit. Yeah, it's just a trade off, right, between what do you want from data reliability, data features versus what do you want from a performance category. I mean, it's kind of that simple, isn't it? Yeah, you're not. It's not going to be the best for both use cases, but you have to understand where its strong uh, strong suits are and where its weaknesses are. And incidentally, you disabled dedupe and compression and compaction for your testing. Yeah, so we wanted to show where you can get at the high marks on this uh, platform, uh, but uh, going with a uh, deployment of all flash, for example, turn those features on because you're going to be able to uh, absorb data and not have as much overhead that might kind of destroy your hard drive performance. And in that case, if you were going to do that, you probably would want to opt for a little more RAM too, do you think? Possibly. I mean, 32 gig is a pretty large amount for uh, this platform, but if you're going to be running applications on top of it, uh, that's well, for where... sure. If you're going to run any of the virtualization or container stuff on here, it might give you a little yeah, extra definitely. pep in your step. Okay. So back to the 4K. Okay. We covered off on this, right? Yeah. And then on our uh, 8K73 workload, this is another area where 
I mean, flash is going to be faster than hard drives, uh, but I, it's going to be much less than what you find on a non-ZFS platform. These numbers would be a heck of a lot higher on a uh, on other competing QNAP platforms. It really depends on what the use case is for this particular platform is, and application database workloads probably would not be the best uh, to run on this. Even though you could in a smaller setting, this is really for you're going to be dumping a ton of data on. Maybe you're going to have your file group sitting on this, and DDoP and compression can really help you out in that uh, in those areas. So what's interesting to me then is if we look at the QNAP portfolio, they've got three OS offerings, right? They've got QTS, this guy, QUTS Hero, and then QES, which I think maybe is going to end up being uh, perhaps replaced by the ZFS offering. But one thing that they've got to do is make sure that the experience of migrating between the platforms is similar and consistent, right? So that Users they all aren't. look very similar. So from a setup point since uh, in the past month, and we have played around with all three, um, there's not a lot of difference from how you set up a uh, traditional NAS platform versus this guy. But there are a little more differences when you go into the dual controller platform, which feels maybe a little bit more dated because it's not updated as often that uh, this one. Oh, no, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. But to get to this one, you still use QFinder, the same yeah, as anything else, and pull it in through the browser and or the app, I suppose you could do either way. Yeah, it's really and, easy and let to it go. On. All right, well, let's do this. Let's throw this guy back in the rack, and then we'll we'll rejoin with it online and power it up, and, and Kevin will take us through a little bit of the interface, show us where some of those checkboxes are in volume controls for the dedupe and compression, whatever else you want, yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the UI. All right, so we got this guy racked back up, cabled, powered, back on, and are greeted by, after signing into the admin, the friendly little sufficient memory robot. I'm glad to see this little uh, dude made it over from the QTS interface. And yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it makes me angry, actually. Why doesn't that guy say anything more than just sufficient memory? And he's always so happy. That's what yes. gets me, makes me so mad. All right, yeah. so when we log in, as we were talking about before, it looks and feels uh, the same as uh, other QTS systems, right? And including, does it have the whole app library? Yeah, as far as I can tell, I mean, it pretty much has everything I'm used to seeing. There might be some nuance there of some fringe elements that aren't uh, incorporated in it, but uh, it has everything that we've seen before. Okay, so all the all the popular things are there. I see the QMix guy and uh, VPN and some of their other third-party integrations. Okay, well, let's, we don't need to mess around with this too much. I just wanted to quickly dive into the volumes and, uh, and take a look. Look at, I love that. Uh, that tidy combination of squares and circles you have there. Yeah, uh, generally I like to group up the SSDs and the hard drives in their little areas, but uh, I didn't. <laughs> I kind of guessed at where uh, what number the slots would be, and my guess was wrong. So, so the I mean, squares are the SSDs, and they would normally be sequential if you were a sane person, but in this case, you're not. Yeah, it's like a reverse order from the bottom left: one, two, three, four, and it just. I was not able to guess it sufficiently. I feel like there's some joke to be made here about square peg round hole, but we shall carry on. All right, let's see your volumes that you've set up or your pools or what. So right now, this is on the tail end of our review. So it's the, um, as you can see, it's a smaller uh, capacity disk group at the moment or storage pool. But this is because it's the rate five across our four SSDs. Okay. Uh, and in here, we can see our. Um, four file shares and then our four iSCSI block shares. And on here, uh, compression dedupe are currently disabled on our uh, four shared folders, but it's very easy to turn on. Um, so depending on how you want to get rolling, you can get that thing going pretty easily. So that's just two radio buttons for those volumes. Nothing else, I mean, that's no, it's, that simple. That is, that is as simple it is. Okay, and what about reporting? What does QNAP offer to show us the magnificence of our decisions here? So under the uh, storage pool itself, uh, you can see the data reduction. Somehow it reduced the data by, uh, what was that, 42 megabytes uh, with something that was still enabled. <laughs> right. But um, it'll do a breakdown of uh, every single uh, of your uh, shared folders and LUNs uh, that have it enabled. So here you can see 
uh, public folder used uh, 4.7 megabytes. Uh, that's now 3.09. Look at the savings. Uh, yeah, so there's, you can kind of see how it drills down uh, based on folders. And obviously, in certain areas, if you had this thing loaded up with Word docs, PDFs, things like that, you'd probably get some significant savings, which if you use it as a file group, um, uh, NAS. I mean, th that's the main area to uh, see your benefits. So when you roll back up there, those three little circles. Okay, so that shows you your original, your after, and then with the the dedupe uh, uh, as well, compression and dedupe. All right, well that's that's a neat visual indicator, and I kind of like how it breaks it out underneath, so that you could see, you could turn it on for everything, and then see what's compressing well, what's deduping well, or if you know that you've got some things that that don't handle compression well, you could just yeah. If it you off. load it up with video files, for example, in right. a folder, you probably don't want to have dedupe and compression on uh, with that. Okay, um, so that's pretty cool. Anything else that's uh, unique in here that? No, I mean, uh, everything worked the way we would expect. And uh, even networking, for example, uh, it's pretty easy to configure. We did our, um, each of our 10 gig interfaces, uh, we assigned to uh, one of our VLANs. You can add in different VLAN interfaces per an interface. The only kind of odd quirk is, um, early on we mentioned uh, QFinder is used to um, locate this on a, a network. Uh, when QFinder um, looks at this guy right now, it sees that um, kind of dummy IP address uh, and not the uh, VLAN IP address, even though the QFinder system sits on that same VLAN, it for some reason only looks at the primary uh, network card, which in this case just ha doesn't have anything assigned to it. Mm. Well, I suppose you could engineer around that if you needed to. Oh yeah, it's definitely just more of a software work than anything else. And overall, just as an aside, you're a pretty big fan of the VLAN setup on QNAP generally, right? Yeah, you can actually assign multiple VLANs per a network interface where other NAS systems, it's kind of a one or nothing type of uh, scenario. Okay. So overall, the, the UI is familiar, especially for QNAP users, so nothing particularly onerous when you go to a ZFS version. You've got the uh, radio buttons for compression and dedupe. You've got some new reporting. Uh, snapshotting works similarly. You've got more scalability there in the uh, uh, retention policy because you can make bigger volumes. You can do other things, but largely it's the same. Yeah, what's nice, uh, compared to other ZFS platforms on the market, this one is really easy to use. There are others where I mean, it's great if you have unlimited features, but trying to drill down to it, if you have no idea what you're doing, or if it's the first time you've used that given platform, it's a huge learning curve. In this case, it looks identical to where we've seen at the QNAP platforms, and you can start introducing some of those features with just like clicking some buttons here and there. Right, so this is ZFS with training wheels then? Yes. And then, but it still does what you want it. It's got all the packages you can put in there to expand its capabilities. Virtualization, the containers we mentioned, some backup and security options, other stuff that's that's in the the QNAP world. Um, the performance is kind of the only thing from your perspective that holds us back a little bit. Yeah, but that's not a QNAP thing. That's a ZFS thing. And in the trade-off, you get all those ZFS benefits. So it's like, what do you want? If you want the enterprise data features, data reliability. Um, the snapshot, <laughs> snapshotting <laughs> to infinity. I almost made a mistake there that might have gotten our YouTube video flagged. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> then, then this is a great solution for those types of, uh, uh, of of use cases. I still can't believe I almost said snap. Yeah, but I mean, so when you look at this platform, you have, um, if you're running application workloads, doing a, lot of, doing a lot of database workloads, you probably want to steer yourself towards one of the other QNAP uh, NAS systems. But more file share, backup target, replication target. Yeah, this definitely fits all the checkboxes of the features that you really want to have on that type of system, but you don't find it on the other platform. So if it really depends on uh, pick the use case before you buy the system and uh, or pick the pick the system for system. the use case. Oh, there you yeah, go. get the system or the use case, and then flip it around if you need yeah. to. And if you want a deeper dive on uh, what QNAP's doing with the ZFS platforms, they've got a 50-minute video up on YouTube. It's worth checking out if you want to see a little bit more of the the nitty gritty that's uh, behind the scenes in, in ZFS. But overall. It's a very capable platform in terms of what it's trying to do. It's a, it's just a, you know, just it's a SATA platform, so it's not trying to to go tick all the high performance boxes, but it still gives you all those data protection and resiliency features that uh, that we've talked about. Uh, full review is out there, so check it out. And thanks for tuning in.